So today we are in the shoes of a firm looking to buy capital for their business. We are trying to figure out how much capital this firm desires to buy. So we are given the formula for calculating y is y equals 22 times k minus k squared. So you can type this in your calculator and figure it out for each level of k how much output will be produced for each machine added or bought. Um, next, after that, we want to figure out the marginal productivity of capital. So, just it's important to note that each um, unit of output sells for one dollar. So that's just keeping it nice and simple. So we don't need to do another value marginal productivity um, graph. So the change in y here is twenty one, and then nineteen. 17, 15, 13, 11, 9, and 7. So now we've got the marginal productivity of capital. So you could almost think of this as your marginal benefit curve for talking in other parts of economics. So, and you know that in other, those other parts of economics that to profit maximize you would produce until your marginal benefit equals your marginal cost. So, the next step I'm going to take you through is figuring out what the cost, or what the equivalent to what you'd call the marginal cost in the working of capital is. And it's called the user cost of capital. So that's important, the user cost of capital. The definition's down here. So it's the implicit annual cost of investing in physical capital determined by things such as interest rate, the rate of depreciation, and tax regulations. So for this example we've been given a depreciation rate and a real interest rate of 8%. We've also been given the price of capital. So the first component that we will need to figure out this question is, let me just change color, depreciation times 80 and what's depreciation? 12% so for each unit of capital is $80 so it's $80 to buy each one of these units so to buy one it's $80 to buy two it's 160 so anyway so for each unit it's $80 and it depreciates in one year by 12% so this is a cost so when we're figuring out the user cost of capital, we must include this. So what else must we include? We must include the opportunity cost. What else could we be investing our money in? And if we know that the real interest rate on the market is 8%, we could be getting an 8% return. So... Zero point zero eight and times about eighty because it's co we're spending eighty dollars on each unit of capital. That eighty dollars could be invested, getting an eight percent return. And then we want to add these together to get our user cost of capital. Um, so if we were to write this formula out. That's the price of capital times D plus the price of capital times R. So we'll call it UC if we use the cost of capital. So this is the formula we've used above. Slightly different order, but same formula. Now looking at this formula, you can simplify this to just go R plus D times the price of capital. Um, so yeah, that's a simplified version of the formula. In, a, in other examples you may be asked to take also into account tax but in this example we have not been given any tax, um, capital tax rate, so we will not add that into our user cost of capital. 
So, calculate how many units the film desires. Actually, before we do that, I will calculate what this equals. We have 0 0.12 plus 0 0.08 equals that times 80 equals 16. So our user cost of capital is 16. Okay, before I continue on to figure out the answer, move across to this graph over here. Now what is on this graph? We're going to look at marginal product of capital in the future. And on the x-axis, we'll look at the amount of capital bought. And this could also be looked at as user cost of capital. So we now know that the user cost of capital is 16. So we can draw across a straight line. And it is well, that's really fat. Let's change color. So the user cost of capital is 16. And the marginal product of capital is these figures here. So you need to plot these all on the graph to determine your curve. Um, We'll just go like this. So this is our MPK. So we're all look, we're looking ahead in the future. So this could be looked at as marginal product of capital in the future. So I guess that should have an F. And on the table, you could label that marginal product of your capital future as well. Don't let that confuse you. Um, so how much are they going to want to hire? They're going to hire where the user cost of capital, which is a straight curve across, let me just label it, user cost of capital is equal to the marginal productivity of capital, the benefits of getting that, of having that capital. We can draw this on the graph at this point here. And this is how much capital is desired. So this can be labeled K star. Because if you have more capital than K star, your user cost capital is going to be greater than the marginal benefit you get from that capital. So it's going to result in a decrease in the profit. And then vice versa for not having enough. So what we're trying to figure out is K star. So looking at the table, if the user cost of capital is 16, um, we're going to want to keep getting more workers until user cost of capital equals MPK. So we get zero workers, one workers, two workers. We can go from two to three workers and it adds 17 of benefit. So we're going to hire three workers. But we're going to, if we go from three workers to four workers, we're only going to get 15 benefit. So the answer is three workers. So this will be our output. And this will be our marginal productivity of capital. And for question, the first question, we will have um, three units of capital. So what if the real interest rate was 3%? Well, if we look at what the determines the user cost curve, it is R plus D times PK. So we are I'm oh, sorry, decreasing the interest rate. So if we decrease the interest rate to 3%, our new user cost of capital will equal 
3% plus 12% times 80, which equals 12. So our new user cost of capital is 12. Let's change this to this color. So to show this, what's happening on the graph, this here is decreasing. Um, user cost is decreasing down to 12. And what is the result? The new K-star equilibrium is now located, is increased. So we know now that our new, what we figure out, will be an increase in capital to the new K-star up here. So when user cost of capital is equal to MPK, and our user cost of capital is 12, we will continue producing until we get five units of capital. If we go from five to six, um, our we will lose out because the benefit will be less than this cost. So the answer is five. The answer to the last one, or if the real interest rate was three percent, we would get five units of capital. Anyway, thank you for listening.